Hey, welcome to Socialism for All. Today's date is January 20, 2022. And our second article here is also about the pandemic, and it's about why there aren't more N95 masks on the market. So this is an article from a website called Roll Call, and the headline is CDC has backlog of applications from manufacturers of N95 masks. Tagline, without CDC approval, makers of N95s cannot advertise on social media sites. This article was written by Emily Kopp, posted January 19, 2022. So commenting, um, N95s are important. Why? Because from everything that we know, COVID-19 is airborne, meaning it doesn't just spread through droplets. It does do that. But also, some of the droplets can get so fine that they turn into an aerosolized mist, and they can linger suspended in the air. Like, you know, bigger droplets are more subject to gravity and they drop more quickly. But aerosols can just sort of hang out in the atmosphere for a while. Kind of like smoke, except it's invisible. So how do you deal with that? Well, basically you need to wear an air filter on your face. That's an N95 or a KN95. The KN95s are kind of like the Chinese equivalent of the N95. N95s are a U.S. standard. So the U.S. CDC has been asked to, but has declined to, recommend, not just mandate, but recommend even, N95 masks for the general population. There's no really compelling reason for them not to do this. I mean, especially because they're barely doing anything else to stop transmission. This could be something. At least recommend that people wear them. You know, I mean, a mandate would be much better it really wouldn't impact businesses that much, but like, here, wear this little bag on your face. That's kind of more of an individual behavior thing. Like, yes, air filters would be good as well, but like, you can at least have individuals wear masks and like make that, you know, the mandate and whatever. Uh, that would significantly improve transmission, which in the last two days, we just had two million cases in two days. That's completely out of control. So they need to do something. But let's say that they did do the N95. Some people have said, well, there wouldn't be enough to go around. Well, why aren't there enough to go around? Why wouldn't there be? First of all, there might be, but uh, why wouldn't there be? So let's get into the article, which might explain some of why there aren't more N95s on the market. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, oversees a backlog of 142 applications from manufacturers of air filtering masks such as N95s, which the agency was criticized as being slow to recommend over cloth masks before updating its guidance Friday. Comment there, cloth masks, how useful are they against aerosols? Virtually not at all. They do protect against droplets, but that's not really the only concern. So cloth masks, if you're going to wear a cloth mask, wear a surgical mask underneath it. You can significantly improve your coverage that way, but uh, really just get the N95. All right. The National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, NIOSH, a part of CDC, has yet to review dozens of applications from manufacturers seeking regulatory approval to sell N95s, according to its website. Some of these applications have sat at CDC for months. One application, submitted to the center in April, wasn't completed until late December. Quote, NIOSH should make their way through the backlog and approve or disapprove more masks. More choice is good for consumers. Megan Ranney, academic dean of the Brown University School of Public Health and co-founder of the Get Us PPE, personal protective equipment, organization that delivers protective equipment, said in an email. The backlog contributed to masks stacking up in their warehouses even as COVID-19 cases skyrocketed, according to American-based N95 manufacturers, many of whom began making protective equipment like masks for the first time during the pandemic. Without NIOSH approval, makers of N95s cannot advertise on the same social media sites like Amazon and Facebook, where ads for counterfeit KN95s and cloth masks are ubiquitous. Amazon, Facebook, and Google can be slow to recognize certification, say manufacturers, with even some NIOSH-approved N95s still being blocked from the sites. Facebook did not respond to requests for a comment. So a comment there, I remember uh, last year I was looking at, you know, where to get genuine N95s, and I saw that exact situation. I want to say it was like, 
American ball bearing company or so. It was like a company that used to make ball bearings. And with the pandemic, I guess they figured they, they had the equipment that could make N95s and they started making them. It was an interesting story. Continuing, quote, for masks marketed as N95 and KN95, we have implemented a rigorous seller vetting and product review process to ensure compliance with applicable laws, regulations, and Amazon policies, said an Amazon spokesman, including inspecting supplier invoices, reviewing packaging, and comparing against the CDC's counterfeit mask list. Google responded with similar comments. Quote, NIOSH has been really inundated with applications. Well, according to this, <laughs> there's like only a little over 100, but okay. And I know that they're doing the best they can, given their relatively small size. <laughs> it's a pandemic and being understaffed, said Dan Glucksman, Public Affairs Director for the International Safety Equipment Association, a lobby for protective equipment makers. Yet you would think, though, that given that we're in an emergency situation, they could, I don't know, hire a few more people, get things rolling. What do I know? The laboratory within NIOSH that approves respirators has 88 employees, with 35 working full-time on respirator approvals, according to the agency. Wow. I mean, double it. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Before the pandemic, NIOSH received six to eight requests per year from companies seeking to become new approval holders, said spokeswoman Stephanie Stevens. In 2021, there were 139 requests from new entities pursuing NIOSH approval. Okay, but that's fairly predictable given the situation. What's the deal? CDC's guidance. Meanwhile, President Joe Biden is announcing on Wednesday that he plans to make 400 million high-filtrating masks available to the public for free through drugstores, community centers, and other locations. Can, just pause. So, 400 million. How many people are in the U.S.? 330 million. Okay. Now, some are babies, but um, let's just even say, I don't know, that 200 million people, okay? Like, so you're excluding 130 million people. 200 million people don't want them, aren't going to use them. That's two masks per person. They are, again, not supposed to be reworn. So... That's two days worth of masks. Tragic. I mean, what are they doing? Okay, through drugstores, community centers, and other locations. Under pressure from public health experts, CDC updated its guidance on Friday to reflect the superior protection from N95s over other types of masks and removed language suggesting a shortage of N95s. Okay, finally. Again, we're in calendar year three here. Quote, Masks and respirators can provide varying degrees of protection with well-fitting National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, or NIOSH-approved respirators, offering the most protection, the website reads. By definition, an N95 must filter at least 95% of airborne particles. Cloth masks filter at least 20% of particles, while medical masks do not reliably filter out smaller airborne particles. According to the Johns Hopkins Center, for health security. Even as COVID-19 caseloads shatter records, CDC Director Rochelle Walensky has added caveats when suggesting the use of highly protective N95 masks, saying they may be uncomfortable <laughs> for some to wear. Oh my God. I mean, yeah, like uh, sex might feel a little less sensitive when you're wearing a condom it, it, also, though, you should recommend that people do that. Like, what the fuck? Oh, wow. I mean, it's like they might as well just come out and say, like, everyone die. Everyone die. Because that's pretty much the message I'm getting. And the CDC website reflects that message. Quote, some masks and respirators offer higher levels of protection than others, and some may be harder to tolerate or wear consistently than others, the site reads. It is most, oh my God, it is most important to wear a well-fitted mask or respirator correctly that is comfortable for you. Yeah, never mind that there's a virus circulating and we had 2 million cases in the last two days. Your comfort really is paramount here. Walensky needs to be fired 
anybody who is signing off on these policies ought to have their credentials stripped. I'm serious. NIOSH said in a statement that it issued 750 approval decisions last year. CDC confirmed that it uses the term approval action to refer to decisions including denials as well. Some mask makers say that the CDC's urgency around N95s changed after the pandemic's first winter wave in 2020. Gary Warren, CEO of medical manufacturing company IV Watch LLC, said that federal officials encouraged investment in medical grade N95s in August 2020. But by February 2021, he said that CDC's attitude had flipped. Time out. What happened? Biden got elected and took office. Walensky became head of CDC, and they had this new herd immunity plus vaccine idea. They hadn't, uh, you know, removed the mask mandates yet, but clearly that was in the pipeline. Quote, it wasn't like, we'll help you get through anymore. It was like, are you sure you want to be in this market? Warren said. So that's really interesting. So the CDC is basically like, yeah, you might not want to make masks. And I'm sure these manufacturers are like, what are you talking about? There's mask mandates, the pandemic's going on. We don't know how the vaccines are going to work yet. Like, yeah. And then, of course, they pulled back the mask mandates in May and it became Vaxor Mask, one of the worst decisions ever led to many needless deaths and injuries. Continuing, his company only received approval to market his masks as N95s in November 2021 after applying in April. Warren is among those who say that online retailers are not always quick to recognize NIOSH approval. Warren's N95 operation, which falls under a subsidiary called Blocks, received 42 rejection letters from Amazon. The last rejection warned that more attempts to advertise on the site would lead to his account being suspended. Quote, I feel like I'm living in Alice in Wonderland, said Warren, who said that he invested $3 million into changing his supply lines to make N95s. Quote, we have been trying to deal with Google and Facebook to allow us to advertise, and they will not, said Claudio Dent, president of another manufacturer, Dentech Safety Specialists. Quote, CDC and NIOSH list every manufacturer and product that is certified on their website. We have told Google this, and it doesn't matter to them, unquote. So another comment here. They're going to continue with more mask manufacturers and talking to them. This is really interesting. Um, another problem you could avoid in socialism. Why? Because production would be directed by the government, not private industry, and you don't have to jump through all these regulatory hoops. You just, <laughs> the government's doing it in the first place. So again, no more of this like rigmarole and private individuals sinking $3 million into this, you know, venture to like, maybe I can make a profit on masks, etc. Talk about a situation where market anarchy has completely hamstrung <laughs> normal societal functioning. Anyway, continuing. The American Mask Manufacturers Association estimated in a letter to the Biden administration last winter that it could produce 298 million U.S.-made N95 respirators and 671,000 reusable respirators each month. So quick comment there. Like I said, N95s are not meant to be reused. The reusable ones believe that these are more the like elastomeric types. They're kind of the ones that look more like a gas mask and then you change the filters on the outside of them. So what are we talking about, though, number-wise? 298 million U.S.-made N95 respirators and then significant amount, 671,000 reusable ones each month. Well, again, 330 million people in the United States. Some won't want them, but that's only, you know, even assuming that 100 million people want the N95s, that's only three per month. So a lot more people would have to switch to using the reusable ones just to have a supply. So, I mean, okay, you could also, I mean, I don't know where the Defense Production Act comes into this, which, go back to an earlier article, fired Jeff Zients, uh, who has refused to invoke that when Biden made such a big deal about it when running against Trump, etc. But anyway, these are what the private mask manufacturers say that they could do. Continuing. The group began redoubling its efforts to get the administration's attention recently as the Omicron variant spread using Twitter 
this is unbelievable, and voicemails to White House COVID-19 operations director Jeffrey Wexler on December 22nd and December 29. Quote, I said there's over two dozen U.S. domestic manufacturers in AMA and that we're looking to help. We have hundreds of millions of N95s and surgical masks ready to go instantly, said AMA, that's the American Mask Manufacturers Association, President Nicholas Smith. Quote, then we also have the capacity to make hundreds of millions of N95s as well, so we can help to protect the American public right now and keep sending PPE to American households, unquote. It's like, you know, you can imagine the voicemails, <laughs> like, pick up, I know you're there, I know you're there, Wexler, come on, pick up, come on, we got masks, come on. Uh, anyway. After months of lobbying, Smith met with National COVID-19 Supply Coordinator Tim Manning on January 6. Smith said that Manning promised to work on relieving the NIOSH backlog and pushing for more advertising of N95 masks on sites like Facebook. The White House didn't respond, <laughs> surprise, surprise, to requests for comment. N95s are pricier than KN95s. Um, commenting on that, like, a little bit, not that much. I, I think they're... A, about the same from everything I've seen. Like, maybe a little bit per mask, but not a ton. And cloth masks can be difficult to find, so Americans are sourcing masks where they can find them. Amazon offers KN95s, a Chinese standard not independently verified by U.S. regulators. According to the CDC, about 60% of KN95s are fake. Okay, so would you like people to keep wearing the fake ones that they can get, or would you like to help them get real ones? Like, your choice. Okay. Armbrust American, one AMA manufacturer of N95s, shifted some production to KN95s because they were easier to sell. U.S. manufacturers fought weak messaging from the CDC and White House. Quote, there was a real overemphasis and kind of falling back on the vaccines that that would be the silver bullet situation, said Connor Knapp, a small New York-based mask maker and AMA member. Quote, I just didn't see that being the case. I felt like it always required a multi-pronged approach. Unquote. End of article. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it really does. Vaccines are your last line of defense. Like, vaccines are internal to your body. That's like after the virus has already penetrated your system, it preps your body to fight it off more vigorously and rapidly. And that's what it does. And get the vaccine. Absolutely. But it's like, uh, you know, saying, well, I'm wearing a seatbelt. Therefore, I don't have to observe traffic rules. Like, you don't want to get into an accident, though, in the first place. And with COVID, you don't want to get infected. And that's where shutdowns and masks and all that. You're supposed to try to prevent the virus from getting in your body to begin with. So, yeah. If I have one takeaway from this entire thing, it's that they just don't fucking care. <laughs> I mean, really. You saw how they handled the lead-poisoned water in Flint, Michigan, and Newark, New Jersey, and other places that have had environmental health catastrophes of one type or another, and what do they do? They send the president out to pretend he's drinking the water, tell you everything's fine, and nothing's fine. They don't care, and now it's the entire country all at once. They don't care. They're fine with letting us die. That is the basic takeaway that I get from this experience. And, you know, I got a pretty clear flash. Maybe this, you know, won't happen, but I got a sense of the possibility today, thinking about all this, of like, this really could just be going on for years. And, I mean, this we might be in this situation, maybe not with, you know, 800,000 cases a day, um, but really in a similar situation of this, sounding the alarm for just several years on end. It's entirely possible. Um, if they're willing to deny Omicron, I don't know, you know why they wouldn't be willing to deny any other phase of the pandemic that may pop up as well. You know, if you want solutions, and I want solutions to this, we have to build them ourselves. Obviously, the Republican Party is not going to do anything about this. Obviously, the Democratic Party is not going to do anything about this. And no, you can't change the Democratic Party. You can't just elect better Democrats. That doesn't really work. We need to build worker-powered, non-capitalist-controlled political solutions. This is why we do Marxist-Leninist theory 
here on this channel to learn from movements across history, well, obviously recent history, the history of the capitalist era, to get solutions to current problems, because we need them. We really need them. Anyway, on that, I'm going to leave it here. We've got more to cover, and I'm going to get on that. So thanks for listening. What do you think? Leave a question. Leave a comment in the comments below. Thanks to the current patrons whose names are on the screen. If you'd like to get your name on the screen, head to patreon.com slash socialism for all. You can sign up for any amount, $2 and up. Every donation is appreciated, so thank you very much for those. They're both encouraging and materially helpful. If you'd like to help out without making a donation, you can like, share, subscribe. All of that helps to boost this video and the channel in the YouTube algorithm so that we expand the audience and more people see it. The channel has been growing, so thank you for that. Back in the real world, join an organization, or at least consider making a contribution to one if you're not ready to join yet, but we do need people to get organized in the real world so that we can launch strikes and demonstrations and just generally coordinate political activity and everything that we need to do around that. If people aren't in organizations, it's just one extra step that when actions need to be taken, it's like, you know, everybody's ready to go. And you can also have a greater impact on your community as an organization as well. You know, even a few people working together in a healthy way, you know, obviously you can have groups that are dysfunctional, you got to watch out for that. But I mean, even a group of, you know, three, four, five, six people with a few, like, you know, more fringe volunteers, you can accomplish a tremendous amount and give some shape and form to the class struggle in your area, whatever the particular issues are, where you're at, that your community's facing. Anyway, thanks again for listening, and we'll catch you in the next video.